everybody, look, <clears throat> we got a lot to talk about, especially with WrestleMania coming up. This is a, this road to WrestleMania is crazy. I'm pretty sure y'all can hear my voice. I did just kind of wake up. Um, I sleep on some things. Regarding what happened, what happened on SmackDown last night. Let's go. So, WrestleMania is gonna be crazy. Um, so I'll be talk. I'll be pausing at some points that I need to talk about. I will be pausing at points that I want to talk about with the WrestleMania build, because some it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Let's go. Well, 2024 is totally out of control. Would somebody please make it stop? Also, hello, my friends. It is out of control. Oh, wrestling in 2024, especially for WWE, is out of control. Yeah, like I've said, <laughs> this year is just a roller coaster of emotion. I think I just want to lay down and sleep. Also, don't go on social media today. <laughs> actual dumpster fire. People are really, really mad. And why is that? Well, we're going to get to it because welcome to Ups and Downs, you too. the only wrestling review show worth a damn. That's not true, you know, we've got to put over our own product. But for now, we take the finger of power, we give it a kiss. Let's give the good bits an up, <laughs> and the bad bits are down. But we did indeed start this week's episode of Smack It Down with the bloodline walking in the back, and they were super angry as always, when we also got this Raw Rumble highlight video, and that event felt like it happened in 1872. We also have a brand new announced Team 4 Friday night, yeah, and it is Wade Barrett and Corey Graves. Now, as we already talked about, I do feel very sorry for Kevin Patrick, but putting these two together, I'm just going to say it now. I think this is a really smart move, and we only had one episode of them doing a show together, and already I think they're great. Why does Corey Graves look like a miniature version of Nick Aldis right there in that picture? <laughs> he looks like his little brother. He looks just like him in this picture. I'm very excited about this. It was then time for more people just walking around backstage because we saw Cody you know, Rhodes and Pharaoh, right? and we saw Damage Control hanging out just playing Nintendo, and both of these entities were going to be involved in mega twists. Before that, though, we learned that we are not done with Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul, which makes all the sense in the world. KO got screwed. So out came our United States champion, and I don't know what somebody told him in the back, but it must have been, hey Logs, why don't you go out there and totally go off? He talked about the fact when he first saw Kevin hey, Owens, Logs. he thought he just looked like a pissed off donut, which means Logan Paul thinks donut has feelings. And I keep saying this, Logan Paul should not be as good as he is in the ring. He should not be as good as he is. I still don't like him as a person. I still don't like him. But I got to give credit where credit is due. He'd be going off in the ring. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. But then he got to the Royal Rumble and oh my gosh, KO put a beating on him worse than Floyd Mayweather. That hit me quite hard. I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually a sentence he can say. His point, however, though, yeah. is that like Elton John, he is still standing, unlike the rest of this brittle roster. When he took a shot at CM Punk, he's like, oh, my tricep. And he took a shot at Seth Rollins, he's like, oh, my knee. I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually going to tie to the future too. We are not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Now, he had said Kevin Owens' his name around about 72,000 times at this point, which meant wrestling rule number 8.9 had to kick in. Because KO is backstage, you're like, oh, now I've got to go out there. He straight up told Paul as well, you've forgotten the biggest descriptor about you, and that's that you're an unbearable asshole. But also, sure, let's go back to that Raw Rumble. I actually got the moral victory here. That actually was a really good match at the Raw Rumble. Like I said, they have, like, Logan has no reason to be as good as he is. But like, look, if he, if he can give good wrestling like this all the time, which he has done in most of his matches... I'm not complaining about it. That was a really good match of the Rumble. And also, Kevin Owens, he, he, I'm pretty sure he's going to say it, but he brought up the point. Even the referee was smart. Like, look, I got caught. He saw, he saw the brass nuts. Good job on the referee. But I still beat that ass. Even if I didn't get the actual win, because I got to punch you in the face with brass nuts. 
true. His mission remains the same as well because he is going to win that United States Championship and bring prestige back to the title. And actually, that's one of the things we should do in 2024. We should give that belt to Kevin and he should be this year's Gunther. He just takes on everybody and he wins. Logan was then all like, well, this was my plan all along because I knew you would do this, Kev. Because while I'm playing chess, you're playing Go Fish. <laughs> Can't lie, that's quite funny. Kev made it very it clear though that he doesn't need weapons to beat Logan Paul, so he shall do this soon. When Logan kind of got scared and was like, <laughs> well, I ain't gonna face you again. I need a new challenger. Well, I suppose he's backstage somewhere at the moment, waiting for somebody to push start. Amazingly, right at this moment, Austin Theory walked out there. And I was like, wait a minute, nobody said your name, but he was gonna have a match with Kevin Owens. I mean, he did say his name. He said he has a match with Austin Theory. See, so I'm mean, watching the program. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a joke. Look, I just like the seed planting we did do here. And I suppose we'll get to the Elimination Chamber. And it will be Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul round two. And I actually think Kevin should win. Win is we'll a win. I never remember oh. the date. These two have good chemistry. And this match was really good too. And of course, it all tied in. Because who helped screw over Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble? It was Austin Theory and it's Mike Grayson Waller. Given that it was a wrestling match, Kevin Owens hit Austin Theory for a while, but Austin Theory hit Kevin Owens for a while. But after he gave him a backdrop and we cut to the commercial, when we came back, Austin was strangling Kevin Owens. I mean, that's what was happening. Grayson wasn't really doing much at ringside either, so I was kind of staring at him like, I bet you've got a right old plan. Maybe he's going to hit him with a didgeridoo. That's the worst thing I've ever said. The theory reversed it into that the new move he's been doing. It's called like the hung It's pretty good. Now Logan Paul clearly wasn't confident in his brand new friend at all. So at one point he left the commentary desk and he passed the brass knucks to Austin Theory. But Logan was making such a noise, the referee went over to him like, listen, dude, you're really annoying me. Would you go away? So Owen was like, fine. He took the brass knucks, he punched Grayson, he punched Austin right in his nose, and he pinned him for the one, two, three. Just like that. Kevin then made sure to literally chase Logan Paul out of there. I mean, so yeah, yeah, I presume we will do this in a few more weeks. He tried to use it against I'm gonna him. keep everything crossed. Why not? But 2024 is the year of Kevin Owens. Up. Naomi was then backstage as she was partying with the rest of the SmackDown roster because she is officially part of Friday night. Angle out to y'all. The SmackDown women's roster is stacked. It is stacked. It reminds me of 2016 when that women's roster was stacked as well. You had Naomi, Mia Yim, Shotzi, Bianca, Tiffany, because she signed as well. Um, who else you got? Bailey, EO. Oscar, Kyrie Sane, Dakota Kai. <laughs> oh my God, they got so many. They they have they have so many people. Zelina Vega. <laughs> they got so many. They have they got they got a lot. It's stacked. That ooh, it's stacked. But do you know who else is too? Because they had a contract. There's none other than Tiffany Strand. But that is quite a twist. Leaders. What a way to bolster up that roster. And given that she was all like, well, I'm so happy, and no one else agreed with it, Tiffany just punched me chin She's right in the face. Look at me. I'm chuckling. I just did not see it coming. And now they've got to have a match later. Bianca Belair was also talking to Nick Aldis because she wants to know what she can do at WrestleMania to take on Io Sky. When Logan Paul barged in, he was like, please, Nikki, don't make me face Kevin Owens again when Bianca and Logan got into it. So I think we all know what we need to do here. That is our WrestleMania 40 match. <laughs> Bianca wins. When we got a proper skit. All right. And this was kind of like something you would have seen down in NXT, but Legado Tel Fantasma were in some nice living room drinking wine because Santos Escobar wanted to talk to him. This is because they have an unbreakable bond when he welcomed Electra Lopez back to the group oh, as he laid out what their mission is to make sure we keep Lucha Libra in everybody's mind and respect our ancestors. This is why they have to stop the LWO. <laughs> I was chuckling again. That doesn't make any sense. That's two plus two equals potato. It's like, ah, we want to keep Lucha Libra alive. Well, I know how we do it, by stop. I'm glad that they're doing this again. It actually gets you invested into storylines. Like, <clears throat> if they're not on TV, give them this to do. Like it's a night, nice, it like it's a it's a nice skit, nice segment to like segue into the feud. It keeps you interested when they're not actually on TV in the arena. 
is smart and it's what they do with NXT to keep you interested in their storylines. I'm glad they're, like, they're doing that on the main roster as well. People that are doing Lucha Libre. I think it really worked though because Santos is such a good bad guy. Like he comes across as totally unhinged. So I totally believe he would say unhinged things. And I enjoyed the fact that this was shot in a completely different environment. So much See? so I am giving it an up. Like it was kind of nothing, but do more of this. It's sort of tied into what we got next too. Because oh, we had a crazy match. Because it was Tyler Blayton beat done, taking on Humberto. And also, I, I I don't watch the weekly shows. I, I don't watch. I might do it next year when Raw goes to Netflix. I can watch Raw every week. But I don't have cable TV, so I can't really watch the weekly shows. Angel taking on Pretty Deadly, who are also taking on Wacky Wild and Cruz del Toro. There you go. The most important thing is that somebody told me that Humberto is now called Berto. I need that confirmed instantly, because one, it means he could join the Sesame Street crew, and two, it also means he has to be very worried about Larry David. Now, there was also a stipulation attached to this match, and I make it completely wrong, because it was explained, but I must be tired. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you say? But I think it was this. The winner of this match was indeed going to go on to face the winner of a Raw match, and then whoever wins that match will go to Australia to take on Judgment Day for the tag team title. I mean, it makes sense. Now, I've said it out loud, it's not that confusing at all, but I could totally be wrong. I kind of <laughs> felt like we only did this. He said, he said I said it out loud, it actually, it actually does make sense. He's probably just tired, because that makes all the sense in the world, because the titles can go on both shows. So, in, in raw feuds with Small Raw and SmackDown, it makes all the sense in the world. So Wild could do his crazy NXT slingshot dive again, but that is totally fine by me. You got some people on the internet going, eh, it wasn't good as the last one. Man, sometimes pizza is just pizza, bro. I would watch this every day of the week. Certainly didn't work at yes. all, because after the commercial, Kit Wilson was just beating him up. When Pete Dunne got the hot tag, and you know what he likes to do, Beat breaks people's hands, which makes him kind of a strange person. He needs more hobbies. But then got to all the one, two oohs as everybody got their stuff in when Elton Prince was like, oh man, this hasn't gone well for me because Tyler Bate grabbed him and he did the big old aeroplanes. Look, if they can keep booking the tag team division properly for the men's and women's, they're in good business because tag team wrestling is really fun. Uh, it, it, because... We have some fantastic tag team matches between New Day and the Usos. You can look at NXT. Look at DIY versus the Revival. Like the Dusty Tag Team Classic. They have a lot of great tag team matches in there for men's and women's matches. Look, tag team wrestling can be fun if booked properly. So if they book them correctly, like what it looks like that's what they're doing, just keep it up. Ben. Sometimes yeah, people the simple things just work. Selena Vega and Electra Lopez then got into it because why wouldn't they? Which is when Paul Wilson had his hand snapped by Pete Dunne when Tyler Bate was there. They hit their Mortal Kombat combo finish and they got the one, two, three. Yeah, so now they are almost the number one contenders. So we are living in a crazy world and this was just your fun time where you could sit down and go, I love wrestling. <laughs> Never make that noise again. You sound like an out of control He's ghost. Make it uh, when I we just it. pulled the trigger. Why not? We got WrestleMania to sort. But we saw Damage Control getting ready to head to the ring when Eo Sky decided to go all James Bond villain because she just audibly announced her evil plan to the world. It was mostly to say that tonight Bailey is going to be finished, and when they walked away, who was hiding in the bathroom? I mean, she probably just used the toilet, but it was Bales, and she came out, and man, she. So there's a hashtag on Twitter that says Bailey is hot and look at the material. Look at the material. Cause she I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this for years. Has the best facials. She looked totally devastated, as you would do. Her friends just murked her. We didn't make sure. Simon also. Pause. All they caught what he said. Simon, pause. Make a big deal out of the fact that Bailey was the Royal Rumble winner, and she talked about this too. The I mean, as she's been saying all week, I wasn't even on the poster, but look at me now. It really has worked though, because she was getting all the cheers here, so she's already gone babyface. And also, when Damage Control debuted at SummerSlam, which I was at by the way, it was me and Bradley. Um, she was wearing white, and look, look at this, wearing white again. Long-term booking.
And she continued on with this too. She was like, listen, I'd love to say I did this by myself, but I didn't. Thanks to my girls, it's thanks to my friends. Although they're more than that, they're family. I was like, excuse me, I got something in my eye. And it turned out I did with some fluff in there. Bailey also knows that to be the best, you have to beat the best, which is when she brought Rhea Ripley into the conversation. Although sometimes when you do look at life, it's not about that and it's way more personal. Because sometimes you do have to address what's in your heart or learn who your friends are and who they are not when she turned to the rest of Damage Control. Here we go. And they got so damn good because Bell started to talk in Japanese because she was like, yeah, that's right, Kabuki Warriors and EO Sky. I've heard all the horrible things you were saying behind my back because I'm not an idiot and I'm a smart good guy. She also wanted I mean, to know yeah. if they were done laughing at her and just as she got that in was, Sky's face, smart. of course, Oscar and Kyrie yeah, State attacked her because they're just horrible people. Like, right, Demon's Girl is three-fifths Japanese. I'm going to pick up on some things. Like, I know y'all was talking shit. I know y'all were. Thankfully, I think Bailey had planned for this because she then got a pipe from under the ring and she started smacking these fools, which meant she wanted to kill them. But then she got the microphone and said, yes, at WrestleMania, I'm going to be challenging you, EO Sky. And everybody went crazy and so did I. This is good stuff. She also Wait, used the pipe to point at the WrestleMania sign, <laughs> which I've never seen before, but I tell you. Bailey is going to win that championship at WrestleMania, and it is going to be a proper moment, and nobody deserves it more than her, as far as I'm concerned. She is an absolute all-timer at this stage, and I cannot wait. I enjoyed all of it. And also, Bailey, I, I really want her to win. I really want her to win. This will be a, her first, which is crazy once you think about it. This will be her first singles, one, singles match at WrestleMania. Like, like, not even for a title. Like, it's her first singles match in general. I think she's been in W since, like, 2012 or 2013. Well over 10 years. Like, obviously, she spent some time in NXT, but ever since she got to the main roster, this, this is her first one-on-one -on -one match, which is crazy. It's very well done, and it paid off a long-term story. Give it a nap. Well, I got confused. Yes, this happens a lot. But I'm pretty sure it was meant to be the final testament versus Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits uh -huh. when they all got in the ring and they just started to brawl. Uh -huh. Given the bell hadn't rung, French the ref was like, man, I just want to go home. So I think they called it off. I don't know. Eventually got yeah. down to Karrion Cross versus Bobby Lashley. Yeah, that actually does. I, I feel like um, that booking kind of does make sense. Like these people have been in each other's throats for months now. I'm not about to just wait around and fight. Of course, they made like a singles match, um, which which eventually got thrown out as well. I mean, he's going to say that too. That match got thrown out. Then um, BFAB, she joined with them. So I'm probably at the Elimination Chamber. It'll be an eight-person tag match. Yeah, that's, that's eight people. I have to do math in my head. Um, it'll probably be an eight-person tag team match. You know? Um, it's not... Um, it's not a story a lot of people are too invested in, I mean, because people don't really care about carrying Cross, but they love the Street Profits and Bobby, so that's where we're going to watch it, you know? And y'all know what month it is, right? Y'all know what month it is, right? Uh-huh, look at the button. Look at the button. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can see it that well. Look at the button. Yeah. I don't still don't know if y'all can read it. By Chris, you made every day. Yeah. They they should win. So as always, Lashley whooped his ass. But just as he was about to apply the hurt lock, Scarlett was here. She basically jumped on his back uh -huh. when B Fab arrived. There you and go. she attacked Scarlett. Uh -huh. so I guess all those conversations she had with Bob last year paid off. It opened the door yeah. for Lashley to spear well, Karen really as the final testament ran away as the authors of Pain were writing a new book, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we hurt so bad. And that was also a bit weird. Couldn't they win the numbers game? There's loads more of them. Now, there was no follow-up to this either. And while it is kind yeah, of cool to watch a bunch of big guys smash each other, I don't really know where this is going at the moment. It's kind of a shame it's not Survivor Series season. It would work really well. I'm also not 100% sure why they are feuding. So this is one of those stories that needs a little bit of TLC that WWE has given other narratives. So for now, it's a down. Like, I love both groups, and I really like how they look, especially Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. They have not done anything for a long old time. I I would say that's fair because they they did not give a reason as to why they were fighting. They just 
kind of started. <laughs> they just just they just started fighting randomly. They never did give a reason why. So that's that's a fair analysis. It's getting it down. Braun Breaker was then being courted by both Nick Aldis and Adam Pearce. I mean, he was looking through his SmackDown contract here when he did walk off when in walked none other than Jade Cargill. Now she did indeed shake hands with Aldis, we kind of made it seem like she will sign with Smackdown, which is what she should do, because then we can get to WrestleMania, and we can do Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargill. I don't even care, man. Just give them five minutes and let them smash each other. Be totally brilliant. When we did indeed get an NXT call up right, because Tiffany Stratton was properly debuting on the main roster. She also got her first big win as she did take on Meechin and WWE just did this right because the whole point was to say, oh look, it's Tiffany Stratton from NXT. And if you don't know, she's a big star. Who? A big star. Did you say star? You bet I said star. Now Meechin did whoop her ass for a little while here, including giving her a ground and pound when she looked through her suplex book and decided, you know what? I'm oh. just gonna do all of them. Tiffany then got back into this by hurling Meechin's face into the floor when she asked what time it was. And obviously, it was Tiffany time. What were you thinking? 4 p.m.? <laughs> Tiffy time. Not Tiffany. Tiffy. Watch the product time. I'm, I'm, I'm keep saying it. You then did over talk with the D-pad, so Meechin got back into it with a bunch of strikes when she hit the neck breaker. And I was like, damn it, she wanted to break some necks. It kind of looked like she had it won as well because she hit the double knees, although Tiffany was able to get her foot on the ropes when she made sure to plant her with some kind of fireman's carry. And she did that wonderful moonsault, which probably is the best moonsault in the business. And she got the one, two, three, lickety split just like that. So I am very excited to see what she does do on SmackDown because honestly, she can go all the way. She she's has good. all the tools. Give it it when? Well, you know how good I'm just going to tell you, if you haven't seen SmackDown, you should probably be sitting down for this. Are we going to finish the story at WrestleMania 40? We're going to finish a story. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to finish a story. I'm going to let him talk real quick. And then I'll give my... Oh, let's go. No. No, we're not. Unless the book is the never-ending story, then yeah, sure, onwards we go. So it's no wonder that Cody Rhodes is sick of the memes, but before this, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline did head to the ring. Yep. You know the deal. It took around about 78 minutes to get there. Roman then did ask the fans for some acknowledgement, which he did get when he started to talk about Seth Rollins. This is why Reigns is so damn good. Because as soon as he did the name drop and he got no reaction without exactly? hitting a beat, he just went, ha, ah, yeah, I knew it. No pop. This man cooked Seth. He cooked Seth. Seth been talking all shit since Monday. Ever since Monday, Seth been talking shit. Roman said nothing until Friday, and he cooked this man. He said he meant, he just mentioned Seth. And like yeah, exactly. No pop. You gonna be the face of the company walking in with a broken back? It took you like he said his back snapped under the pressure after three months. Roman's been doing this for four years. What? Why you do this man like this? He said, "I work ten times less less than you, but make ten times more than you." Someone put in an ether beat on that Roman Reigns promo because that was crazy. That's wild. You want you want Seth Rollins money? But he want tribal chief money. I'll take the tribal chief money, please. I was just laughing away. He is great. He also called Rollins Championship the loser bracket title. I was just on the floor dying because he was burying this guy as he continued because he did say, oh man, you think you're the man around here? What kind of man spends the last two years walking around in his wife's clothes? Now look, that was a funny line, but also you should dress however makes you feel comfortable. Life is way too short. He then really let into all of this because he was all like, oh man, Rollins doesn't like the fact that I work 10 times less than him, but here's the real rub, you absolute more on, I also earn 10 times more than you. Shut up. He then turned his attention to Cody and said, yeah, sure, man, you can go after the number two championship or take a crack at number one. And given what was about to happen, as much as I enjoyed this, I was a bit like, probably should have dialed it down just a little bit. At this point, Roman had said Cody's name a lot, though, so he did have to go to the ring. It's like he told Drew McIntyre, you'll always be my favorite number two what Roman? He just be cooking people. For, he be cooking people. He told Drew, "You're my favorite number two. 
Cause he said he has the number one title. He's he said that many times the universal title is the number one title. He has said that multiple times. So anyone who holds that that other title is always gonna be number two compared to him. He has said that with my little brother Seth, exactly no pop. He could he cooked Cody last year. Goodness. This is probably one of those occasions with Rhodes in the back going, man, I don't wanna. Now Cody did indeed want this conversation to be more private, even though there was Now, here's the thing. I think all of this happened because CM Punk got injured. And also Seth got injured as at the same time, basically. But Seth, he should be cleared before WrestleMania. That's the only difference. Seth will be cleared. CM Punk won't. That's why I feel like all this happened. If it would have been CM Punk versus Seth at WrestleMania and Cody versus Roman. But since but since CM Punk got injured, he's gonna be out at least six to nine months. And we'll have Cody face Seth. Again, oh, look, I'm not mad at Cody versus Seth. I'm not mad at that at all. Um, th they had three matches in the past, all bangers. Roman has only faced Cody once. That was last year at Mania, which is a banger as well. Don't let people say say otherwise. People just mad at the finish, but the match was still good. Um, at least to me it was. I mean, unless they do some swerve, I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it play out. I'm going to, I'm just going to let all this play out um, because um, from the gist of what happened is that Cody gave his WrestleMania spot to The Rock. So it'll be The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Not necessarily for the title. If they didn't say it was for the title. But I know um, Cody has a guaranteed title match where it'll most likely be against Seth. Cody does have a guaranteed title match since he did win the Rumble. Uh, well, I guess like if he gave his Rumble win to The Rock, just that okay, that that part is kind of confusing. But like, um, maybe I'm just over, I'm maybe just overthinking it a little bit. But um, but at least for now, they never say it was for the title for Roman versus Rock, which is most likely it will be. Um, but look, Cody versus Seth was, was always, always delivered. The Rock versus Roman. If The Rock is in in-ring shape, if he's in in-ring shape, sure. Um, my thing is, if I do The Rock versus Roman, be the, I hope it's the opening match. The only, nah, well, they do it night two. The Rock vs. Roman could be night two. The main reason why I say that because Bailey won the Royal Rumble, and she, I feel like she has earned that main event spot. You no, know, given that she won the Royal Rumble, and I and I really like in the story with her and EO and Damage Control. I like the story a lot, so I, I'm hopefully hopefully Bailey gets the main event or night one. And Roman versus Rock is main event night two. Ten thousand people watching on. So he asked the bloodline to leave. And very interestingly, Roman agreed. So that was just those two. And Paul Heyman was kind of hanging out in the corner. Now this is not super interesting because Rhodes mentioned how he had taken counsel from his family and friends this week. When after almost a year, he finally said, "Hey Roman Reigns, you cheated me last year at WrestleMania, and I had you beat." I oh, said, so, "Oh man." That is so cathartic. I have been waiting for that for the last 10 months. He also wanted to make it very clear, and he said this twice, that the title the Tribal Chief holds is the one that he wants. Because that Okay, I was watching this segment on, on YouTube. Was Cody bleeding? Because his head is like, he has a red spot like right there in his head. Was he bleeding a little bit? I don't know. Or maybe it's just like his regular hair color coming out. I just need to re-dye it is the one that is tied to his dad. He's also been considering what finishing the story means though, and he has decided, sure, it does mean winning that championship, but Roman, it also means taking everything from you, including his shoes. He didn't say that. So no matter what <laughs> happens, Cody is coming for Roman. 
just not at WrestleMania. I can't lie. When he did say that, my heart broke. I was like, Cody, why? What are you doing? This is when Cody went back to the fact that he had been chatting to people, especially one guy that Roman knows very well, when it all went quiet. And guess whose music hit? Yes, yes, That's yeah. right, it was Doink the Clown. <laughs> Can you imagine? Du, 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 du. No, it wasn't your. It was the, the one time he doesn't say Repo Man. No, it was The Rock. Now he stared at Cody and Cody stared at him and they did have a big old embrace when The Rock was. When I first saw this, I thought this was some, some a fan edit, but this is a real thing. It's the real thing, though. But something. T you could. And Cody has the worst poker face ever. Cody has the worst poker face ever. He looked so hurt. He looked so hurt. Look at his face. Look at his face. He does not. He. He looks so hurt. He has the worst poker face ever. If you haven't watched that segment, go watch the segment. He has the worst poker face. Is it probably like, <laughs> I'm taking your main event, brother. And look, we don't know about emotions. You can only see what we are seeing. But if you told me that Cody Rhodes wasn't very happy, I think I'd believe you. I mean, it looked like when Ralph Wiggum had his heart broken by Lisa Simpson. Fair play to him, though, because it is just the ultimate company, man. And then, yes, Roman Reigns looked at The Rock, and The Rock looked at Roman Reigns as they slowly approached each other to let you know this is super serious. And as soon as they were in kissing distance, Smack it Down went off air. What? So while no one said anything, and we didn't get a graphic, if this isn't the main event of WrestleMania 40, the WWE have totally lost their minds, and they're just trolling you. Now, ironically, it does give us a lot to talk about, because the following two statements can be true. Because one, it is properly gutting that we are not going to be getting Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. Like, I genuinely feel sad about this. I really wanted it. However, number two, it's also awesome that we're going to get The Rock versus Roman Reigns. I mean, people have wanted that match for years, and let's not pretend that Dwayne Johnson isn't a megastar. Of course he's a megastar. At some point today, my mum will text me, oh, the actor is doing the wrestling again. She doesn't have a clue. With all that said, though, timing is everything. And when you put everything into a bucket, the timing just doesn't work here. Because now that we have seen this, why did Cody point at Roman Reigns after the Rumble? Also, why would Kofi give up his Raw Rumble powers for The Rock? And thirdly, why did we let Roman Reigns totally destroy Seth Rollins and his championship if that's the belt that Cody is now going after? And mainly, and I've never said this before, I've always been on the other side of the fence, but it left me with this feeling of my tum-tum that just said, why didn't we just have Cody Rhodes beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39? So open up the pack, friends. I'm joining you. So again, we can't really lose here because we are going to get Roman Reigns versus The Rock and that's going to be mega. But when I search my feelings like a Jedi, it's going to get it down. So my overwhelming filming was just actual disappointment for Cody Rhodes and that we are taking this story and we are extending it way too much. Also, speaking of stories, this story doesn't make any sense. Why would Cody bust his ass to win the Royal Rumble, actually do it, and then go, oh... I spoke to The Rock. I'm just going to let him do what he wants to instead. What? I'm also going to imagine that Roman beats The Rock, which means this title run has to continue. And listen, I'm a massive Reigns fan, but it's just time to end it. That's the truth. But also, look, I'm repeating myself now, but it is the equivalent of somebody knocking on your door and telling you, oh my gosh, I've invented no calorie pizza. And you're like, well, I really wanted no calorie ice cream. You're still going to have a good time. But yes, in terms of February the 3rd, or whatever the hell it is, I'm just not sure this is the direction we should be heading in when it comes to long-term booking. But in terms of getting a pop and getting people going crazy, well, it certainly ticked that box. However, I have made my decision. I stand by it. And I've told you many times, though, I do enjoy the chaos because I am Dr. Robotnik. So overall, I am going to give it an up. And now, man, if we are doing Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes for the second championship, as Roman Reigns told me, we got to put some work in. But those two are the workhorses. I'm sure they can figure it out. Now, please do click the video on the screen, which is ups and downs. Okay. Um, so there, there you go. Um, look. I'm going to see where it goes. I'm going to see where everything goes. Like like I said, I would prefer Cody versus Roman. He can finally finish his story. Like, I the bloodline's going on for four years. Cody's story's been going on for two years. Like, 
a lot of people think Roman's story is, is more important, which, you know, fair. You know, four years. Um, and honestly, if he beats Hulk, um, if he beats, if he beats Hogan's record, I'm out for it. Fuck Hulk Hogan. Every time. Um, yeah, I would prefer Roman versus Cody, but you, even, even if you prefer that match, you have to admit the bigger match, like box office wise and money wise, you know, is Roman versus The Rock. You're like, you know it is Roman versus The Rock. <clears throat> I'm talk, I've been talking a lot. I need some water. It's Roman versus Rock. That, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. We know which match is going to be the better wrestling match. Cody versus Seth. We already know that. But The Rock versus Roman is, is the bigger money match. It's the, big, it's the bigger draw, and we all know it. We know it, like, just because we want something else, we know which one is going to sell more tickets. And unfortunately, this is how the cookie crumbles. But let me know what you think about the road to WrestleMania. It's only been two weeks since the... It's only... It hasn't even been a week since the Royal Rumble. Get this. It hasn't even been a week since the Royal Rumble. Let me know what y'all think. In the comments below. Now, if you like this video, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Deuces.